uh, supposedly uh, were where the Egyptian gods. Yeah, right? were the Egyptian gods, and um, they were from the planet. I, I believe it is uh, well the star Sirius. Uh, there's A, B, and C that go around. We could never see C till recently, uh, but there's a depiction and an artifact back in Africa where they show C, and that's where they come from. Um, and uh, it's very, very interesting uh, that opens up another whole thing as far as our spirituality and our religion. Uh, but supposedly uh, they came to teach us a lot about architecture, and I wouldn't be surprised if they helped uh, as well as the Anunnaki's to build those pyramids. And um, why they're always so much near the water, why they have to be so close to the water. And maybe they are coming back uh, because water cannot hit the earth and the atmosphere. Uh, out of the atmosphere, uh, it is um, like, I don't know what the temperature is, but it said it's freezing. Right. And then once it hits the ozone layer, it would dissipate. So uh, it has to be encapsulated in something, just like we have skin that encapsulates our water. There has to be some kind of a membrane, like the membrane around the cell. Uh, so it has to be something intelligent that's actually uh, beings that are intelligent that are actually coming. There's some kind of a plan when you're having 10 to 20,000 of these hitting the earth a year. And NASA really uh, didn't have an explanation for them. David comes up with a pretty interesting one. Yeah, it's excellent. So do go to the website and definitely check it out. And once again, it's esotericcosmos.com forward slash evidence.html. It's 21 videos. Check it out for yourself. And towards the end, when he starts getting into like the water balls and uh, even the Sphinx in uh, Egypt, when it was literally filled up with water, there's these watermarks there to where he was explaining that this was the norm. They kept the water up that high, so that's pretty interesting. Right. Because those beings uh, had to be in water. Supposedly, uh, mermaids are real. You know, that sounds uh, strange. At one point. But uh, uh, I believe now that I'm studying all this, that maybe some of these myths aren't really myths. They weren't really made up. They were real, and they just reported. Man just reported things as they saw them, and. Um, you know, maybe there are fairies and leprechauns and all those kinds of things out there, uh, and they're just beings that came, uh, advanced beings that came from other planets. Uh, it's a possibility that we need to investigate and open up our minds to, instead of just saying they just depicted these things because, uh, uh, for whatever reason, who knows? That you know, it doesn't make any sense to be uh, uh, making things half man, half fish, and like the Pope's hat is the fish. Uh, <laughs> You know, so fish was, uh, if you show his pointed hat sideways, the little circle there is the eye. It is about the fish. It was about the religion, the pagan religion of the uh, fish gods. And um, so they, they date back very, very far back, and they're not maybe just made up. I don't even know if uh, prehistoric or early man had that kind of an imagination that could have mm -hmm. better imaginations than we have today. You know, I put Peter Max and all those people to shame. So, uh, it's something that we say we're just the source of the source of information. We try to give you uh, updates on the things that have uh, uh, come to our attention that stimulated us. Uh, but do the work yourself and make draw your own conclusions. We're not trying to preach out there what you should believe. We just want you to open up your mind, uh, open up your consciousness, and not be so closed off in uh, uh, a box where uh, you know if it doesn't fit into the box. It doesn't, uh, uh, you know, fit into your world. Open up your mind. Be prepared. Things are going to be changing. And as, a, as far as my calendar, they're going to be changing quite rapidly right now. Right. And don't wait for your government official or President Barack Obama. Uh, don't wait for him to announce UFOs are real before you start really studying the stuff and getting into it. They're professional liars. They get paid to lie to you, and they do a very damn good job of it. So um, just go ahead and you know try to make communication with these ETs. They're looking for ambassadors to help get their message of spreading the consciousness of love. That's their you know kind of where they're light workers. They're looking to communicate through you, but you must raise your consciousness level, um, your vibration, and you could do that as easy as just meditating and studying this stuff, understanding more about them. You know, I think that's a powerful way for. Yeah people to really get outside the box if they're open-minded enough and don't let fear, you know, trap them. Right. And right now, uh, you know, the world is where there's so many things that are going on. They keep us in this heavy fear-based 
uh, position right now. Uh, and so what we have to do is when fear comes in, um, just choose peace, just choose love. Choose a different thing to focus on because we create our uh, destiny, we create uh, what our experiences are. And if we're going to buy into that we might have, not have a job tomorrow, or there's going to be a food shortage, or you know the world is you know going downhill, uh, uh, we're going to have nuclear war, whatever it is they're trying to you know uh, keep us in fear. Um, just choose. Our power is to choose to vision a new world, um, and not a new world order like they explain, but a new peaceful, loving. Uh, Co-create a nice, loving world within yourself first, and then that will expand and connect within everything else around you. So if you're losing your home or losing a job or the possibility of all kinds of crazy things that the uh, stock market and the government uh, is uh, uh, you know, uh, sharing with us right now on the news, um, don't buy into anything they say. Choose something that makes you feel good about yourself and about your world and create a better place for yourself to keep your uh, mind in. And, uh, and then it, you co-create the better world around you. It's right. just amazing how that works. Because the essence of change, is, like Rosebud just stated, it's focusing within yourself. You want to change the world, let's say. you got the world on your shoulders. You want to do something great. You can't change the world if you can't first change yourself from within. Change your own level of consciousness. Focus on yourself. Be selfish for yourself. That's not a bad thing. Focusing upon yourself and spending time on yourself, less time with your friends, or, you know, because you need to focus on yourself. It's important. Even if it's only 20 minutes a day, self reflect every day. Because by first changing your own consciousness, that's how you could tap into that ether of, you know, that unified consciousness. And then everything's going to start changing around you. The people around you are going to start to change. And it's incredible how fast that could actually work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's how it does work. And if we read our scriptures and what Christ spoke about or Buddha or anything, it's all about changing your consciousness, about love and peace, and not focusing on war and, um, and uh, you know, uh, negative things, because if we focus on that, that is exactly what we're going to get. And it seems that our world is created right now uh, with that in mind, to keep us focused on all those negative things. So we're, we're, not, we're disempowered. We're, we're slaves to a system <coughs> that keeps us in bondage. And the ETs see this, and um, it, that's why it's a pretty dangerous place to be right now, uh, because we can either self-destruct or we can evolve. And I believe right now, um, my vision is we are going, we are evolving, we are growing. Just that we, the fact that we can get this message out, and Justin and I are together, that we can do this research. Bottom line.